Hi, my name is Mujigami, and today I'll talk about uh, the Windows Defender, especially demystifying and bypassing attack surface detection by understanding the AV signatures. So, who am I? Uh, I'm a security researcher working at the ANSI, which is the French National Cyber Security Agency, and this is why you heard about my terrible French accent. My day job is the audit pen test and sometimes web teaming of uh, some entities. And I previously gave some talks about uh, URM obfuscation and uh, reverse engineering tooling, such as Amazon. So today the subject is uh, attack surface solution. Uh, this is a Microsoft feature uh, which tends to reduce uh, vulnerabilities, attack surfaces. In your application is intelligent rules that help stop malware. So uh, there are the different rules that you can enable. Um, so um, there are all uh, interesting to investigate. So rules such as block office application from creating executable content or block Adobe Reader from creating child processes. We can easily understand why uh, these rules can be a good thing for any defender. So the question is about uh, attacks of resolution. Should we recommend it in our audit? How does it work, actually? And um, can we bypass it? So the first, first thing first, uh, where it is implemented, um, we have a few hints on the Microsoft site like requires Microsoft and Defender antivirus, or uh, is attacks in the FAQ uh, that Azure was originally introduced as a major update to Defender. So it's likely in the antivirus, in Microsoft antivirus uh, in the Defender. Um, to be more precise, uh, if you look at uh, Procman on the uh, MSMP in engine, which is the process running uh, the Defender antivirus, uh, we can see some um, grab of uh, registry and entry on ISO. So it's likely implemented in the Windows Defender. And the question is how uh, they are able to block Adobe Reader from creating shy processes, for instance. Is it a collaboration between Microsoft and Adobe? Detecting Adobe processes through signatures or trusted packages? No. Or just kind of um, regular expressions. So we'll try to find out. So first, I'll just um, give you a, a bit of um, how to reproduce uh, this talk and go further. So I'm kind of doing. Then we we'll look at how ISR are actually implemented uh, to answer the, the question we just asked. And finally, uh, how the Windows Defender's signatures are made and what else can be found in these signature databases. So, first, firstly first, um, I want to, you to be able to reproduce this work. Um, I uh, myself uh, base my work on uh, some previous ones, uh, such as this one, which has been uh, pre uh, already presented at Black Hat. Uh, it was focusing on the emulator inside the Defender uh, Antivirus. Um, there are a lot of uh, inter um, components in the Defender, such as the factor driver, uh, the early launch uh, anti malware, uh, some interfaces, and the engine implementation, MP Engine, with DLL, and some VDM files that you will see later, which are actually the signatures uh, base. Uh, a lot of PDB are, um, so uh, public symbols are available for MP Engine uh, until uh, the last year. And um, if you want to uh, analyze a recent version, you can, as Medicine done for a recent CDU, uh, just uh, diff uh, the different updates and understand uh, what are the changes and just uh, update your version. Totally dual. So, if you want to uh, focus on uh, MP Engine without uh, the, the whole um, Windows uh, system, you can just emulate it. And uh, thanks to Taviso, uh, which released the load library, 
Uh, you can actually run a 32 bit uh, MPNG on Linux, uh, which is really good to instrument or scrape uh, the use of uh, MP Engine and use uh, GDB debugging and so on. Um, so, as an example, you have the link. Um, if you want to actually instrument uh, Defender uh, in a running Windows, uh, you need to perform a few steps. The first one is that uh, MSMPNG uh, is actually uh, PPL, so restricted, uh, um, uh, protected uh, light process. So you can remove this bit, uh, for instance, using uh, Mimigat. And then the uh, Windows Defender factor driver uh, actually registers and call back to deny you to actually emit some um, changes on the process, but you can easily nop is uh, this behavior using a kernel debugger or the, the relative symbol that you need to to um, to change? Um, this is a uh, hint that you can um, also obtain on uh, some cheating forms, for instance. Um, and this is a uh, great to debug or perform some tracing, for instance, using a DBG uh, TTD time travel debugger, and then you can. Get, Chain uh, this kind of trust, which is a really nice way to understand what is actually going on. And in, once you have your setup, you can test your skills. Uh, for instance, I released a, um, a challenge for a recent CTF this year, which is named the Offenders, uh, which is actually the goal is to reverse a binary, which has been made to run inside the Windows Defender sandbox, which is you choose uh, the uh, emulator interface um, and the emulator environment to, to run and you have some write-up on it. Uh, you can also uh, perform some vulnerability research um, or I, I don't know, main, uh, homemade sandbox uh, while grabbing ETW events or anything like that. So now that you know how to instrument uh, Windows Defender, you will be able to reproduce some of uh, my works. So I hope you can um, you will learn uh, um, things uh, in that way. So now um, back to our subject, or are implemented uh, the attack surface prediction rules. Um, so we are trying to find first um, where are the rule implemented actually. Um, the rules are, are um, designed using a, a unique uh, UID, so I can search that UID and try to find uh, where it's defined. First, we can uh, try to find it in the MP engine, which is the main uh, DLL of uh, Windows Defender, and we don't find anything yet. So we can try to raw search uh, them in the VDM file, but no more results. But if now, if you're looking to for the keyword uh, ASR in the code, uh, in the MP engine, we can still find a few related methods, uh, like HTTPS uh, managers, so, uh, host uh, intrusion prevention uh, manager, uh, regarding ASR. So now, if you are trying to find where, uh, where, where is the method are called, um, you can, for instance, use uh, the previous uh, TTD address that we already done. And regarding the call stack and the call site, uh, we, easy, we easy understand that is actually um, inside the Lua engine. So it seems that the Lua engine is using uh, the is, is calling uh, things regarding the HTTPS manager and other sort of things. So if we um, dig in a bit. Uh, we'll see that the HPS manager has a load rules from database uh, function. So this thing is really interesting, which is then calling init scripts, uh, which are um, uh, grabbing uh, get rule info, get monitoring locations, get pass exclusion, and so on uh, from the databases. So what we understand from that is that part of full data must be inside Azure. So in the VGM file, in the form of uh, Lua scripts. So this is interesting. And I will try to find them at that way. So we'll use the WD extract uh, project, which uh, just actually uh, decompress uh, VGM files. 
And now that we have decompressed them, we can go search um, the GUID inside that file, and now we, we found them. And what we just um, see um, um, looking uh, around if that uh, there is the Lua 5.1 magic, so which is the, the, the header for, uh, for Lua compiled scripts. Um, and so this is interesting. We have the UID uh, of uh, our rule and then the Lua magic of, uh, of, of, of Lua script. So let's try to extract those Lua scripts and decompile them. Uh, so the first, so uh, we extract the compiled script and join uh, the common uh, project, which is named Luadec, to actually de uh, decompile them. Uh, but the problem is that uh, it's not working. Uh, after some reverse and digging, uh, this is a good ref you want to reproduce it. Actually, the others are not the one uh, expected by Luadec. That will be changed in the uh, Defender project, and the data, stru data structure size are not the same as expected by the Luadec. Um, I don't know why. Maybe the compilation uh, toolchain is not actually uh, the same, or it has been um, customized a bit. Uh, I don't know. Um, but still, um, if we made it to, if we um, perform to change on Luadec, um, we can have. Uh, write a naive conversion sheet, which is uh, uh, open source now, and, and then we can decompile them. So here is an example of what we can find. Uh, here, we, here we found that a rule is actually, uh, so the script is first uh, checking if the rule is enabled. Uh, if not, it returns uh, mp.claim. Uh, the thing is, uh, you can think as uh, mp.claim as a, like a written uh, zero. Uh, or written force. Um, it's not saying that the, the malware under analyze of the, the candidate under analyze is actually uh, clean. It's just saying uh, I, I don't have any more information in the script. Uh, so, uh, for instance, there is uh, trying to um, uh, test if the discord uh, rule a block executable content from email client and webmail is enabled, and then uh, why it has been called, and then uh, check uh, the, um, the header uh, to, to check if it is uh, actually a zip file or okay. So the not that, the, that we can understand, um, our uh, rules are uh, actually um, uh, made in the US script. Well, we can try to find our, the, the answer uh, to our question. So, all the uh, block Adobe, Adobe Reader from creating child processes is actually implemented. The question is uh, how the real question uh, behind is how Defender know that it is uh, Adobe process? And the answer is, well, it's actually um, regular expressions. So you can see the get info that we saw uh, before, which gives some basic information regarding the rule. And we have a get monitoring locations, which just list uh, some regex about uh, what are the um, process to watch, the, the, the file name of the, of the process uh, to watch. So you have some, um, a big list of all uh, known uh, Adobe reader uh, executables in their uh, location on your disk. Actually, we can we could have found this information uh, in another way. Um, uh, Microsoft is giving a, a test tool that you can download this link, uh, which is uh, made to perform some tests. Um, for, for instance, uh, you can say, okay, I want to try the rule block injection by office application. Uh, then uh, I want to be in the block mode or audit mode. I run the scenario and I see is, uh, if it is actually detected or not. And the question is how uh, Microsoft is implemented uh, that test tool in just a few megabytes uh, without giving you office application and so on. So if we have a look at how it's made. Uh, it's a .NET application, easy to reverse. And what we can see is that you have some list of uh, known uh, Office um, 
application name and the install location. And the tool is actually just uh, picking these names um, and creating a, a notepad um, compiled application in these uh, paths and launching it. Uh, so we have a notepad running with uh, the uh, excel.exe name, for instance. And then uh, it asks this process to create another one and it will trigger uh, the rules uh, if uh, excel.exe is launching another process, for instance. And this is how the test tool is actually uh, implemented, so it, it just confirmed that uh, the rules are only uh, using process names and not um, actual uh, uh, unforgeable uh, trusted uh, packages or nothing like that. So Microsoft is aware of this issue and they say that uh, they try to um, end uh, this behavior. Uh, another thing is that uh, sometimes um, Office or Adobe application actually needs to launch to, uh, to, know, to launch a few processes uh, legitimately. So how can they do that if the rules is unavailable? The way it is implemented is that they use an ex exclusion list, um, or it, it it can be authorized through a uh, script logic. So. Uh, if you look at uh, what are actually uh, included uh, in the whole description, um, oh, you can understand that if that uh, if the executable that is launched is in this path, then it is okay. You can launch it. So, for instance, uh, this is saying that Office can launch Office application, or um, I think it's for Adobe. So, Adobe Reader can launch uh, Office application. It can also launch Internet Explorer. Uh, it can launch uh, Foxy software and so on. Well, it can launch a lot of applications. Actually, if you look at it, it can launch uh, WinRAR, WinZip, Opera, uh, Firefox, um, a few Edge applications, Live Meeting, uh, Visio, and so on. And you have a lot of them, like a lot of them. Not bad and so on. So, in addition to this rule, you have a lot of exclusion lists, and then you can also have exclusion from the from Lua scripts. Uh, question is: As an attacker, can we abuse these exclusion lists? Uh, so let's have a look at uh, block office application from creating executable contents, uh, the, the script related to this uh, rule. And what we can, oh, so the, the first thing that we see in the script is that uh, it's checking that the rule is enabled. If not, it's a early return. Then it's trying to um, check if the, the, if it is actually a block office, uh, an office application. So this is the get uh, context office proc um, that uh, are the implementation. So you have a list of um, common office application and there are um, the uh, maiden list. So just to, just to say that they are categorized actually. So just to say that Excel is in uh, productivity uh, world also, and the link is the communication tool. So if the current uh, uh, process, which is launch, launching another executable, is in, is in this list and is in productivity category, uh, we continue. Then we have a list of uh, the actual extension that are uh, uh, checked by the script. So if you're create, creating an, uh, a file which ends with one of these extensions, this is considered as an executable content creation. So you have the common script languages, you also have a Java file, but some of them are, uh, are missing. So just to be sure that the rule is actually working, there is the command line to enable it. Then I create uh, some basic macro in Excel, just saying, OK, I want to download a file. Uh, this is a, a .exe. I'm dropping in on the disk, and then try then to launch it. And when I when I'm try to drop it in on the disk, um, the ISO rule is triggered, and as you can, as you can see on the, on the bottom right, uh, it's just saying, okay, it has been blocked. 
to, as expected, and you have uh, the corresponding event. So now, if we look at uh, the exclusion, which is in the script, you can see that uh, in addition to the, the uh, exclusion list that we saw before, there are also uh, a few exclusions that are uh, in the script, so performed dynamically. Um, some of these exclusions uh, are uh, depends on the actual um, uh, extension that you use. So if you're using an uh, LNK, uh, there is the, the logic to authorize some. And if you continue to look at it, uh, if, you, if the extension is .exe, and anywhere in the path uh, you use, uh, you, you have the think cell uh, string, actually a directory a named think cell, then it's okay. So I just ask myself, what is it actually think cell? It seems to be a company which is uh, actually um, making uh, tools for uh, Excel which are injecting in Excel. In, Office application, or I don't know, they are actually looking for reverse engineers. So it is a good hint about what uh, the kind of job they are actually doing. But okay, it's this is um, um, authorized for um, uh, in Defender. Uh, if you are creating a .exe file in anywhere in a dictor in, uh, in anywhere uh, where you pass uh, contains uh, directory names, I think so, sorry. Uh, then it, it, it's uh, so let's check for it. Um, here you can see that uh, the I'm creating a file in a thing cell, but with only one L, uh, in it is blocked. But if you change it and create it in a, just a directory named thing cell, then the file is created. I can launch it and there is the just a dummy test. So hey, you bypass it. Um, actually, there are some other bypass that are already documented. Uh, there are some links. Um, these bypasses don't doesn't use the same ID. They are more uh, related to um, the way uh, I saw as a, is actually checking things. So, for instance, uh, it's checking that an office application is um, uh, creating a .exe. So the goal of the bypass is to uh, create an, an intermediate processes which will uh, then create the file. For instance. Uh, this is all the well documented uh, if you want to, to have a look at that. But still, uh, my short conclusion here is that even bypasses exist. Uh, I think it could still block an alert about attacker attempts. So, the story is the same thing. If you want to see high tech attackers, let's start by just removing uh, the ones that we can catch uh, that way. Remove the, the noises, actually. If you look, if you still look at, at the rules, uh, uh, just a few oddities that I want to show with you. So, for instance, here uh, the pass exclusion for control folder access rule. Uh, you have Teams uh, in it, the Microsoft Teams. So it is okay for Teams to to uh, make change. Uh, the updates, uh, the, the updater of Teams is uh, whitelisted for uh, the, the, the role. You have some uh, hidden rules uh, like the Alpla test for ISR, ISR um, which is uh, likely um, a test uh, rule, but uh, it is in production, you can enable it. Or you have some tests also for a, a few uh, domain tests, test domain of uh, Microsoft. You also have not yet published rules. Uh, when I performed this work early, early this year, uh, the block abuse of in the wild exploited vulnerable signed drivers was a rule which wasn't publi yet published, but uh, already in the in the defender. So we can solve uh, this rule before it was actually uh, presented. Uh, now it's you know it's published, so um, no more. Uh, in uh, you can also uh, look at uh, the block executable content from email clients and webmail and ask yourself uh, what are what is a webmail for uh, Microsoft or uh, different group. And if you look at uh, how it's, ma it's mail, uh, actually there is a, a method which is named is webmail download uh, URL. And if you look at it, it's actually ch checking if you are coming from mail.google or uh, Outlook. Or Yahoo Mail, 
And if so, then your webmail and then uh, it will consider to block the executable. And um, last one, uh, the block executable files from running unless they meet a prevalent age uh, or trusted list criterion. Uh, actually, there is uh, an exclusion uh, if you install uh, software using a uh, uh, which is uh, implemented in this, uh, in this room. Okay, so now that we have uh, just an uh, early look at uh, how the Defender uh, ISR rules are, have been made, uh, it seems to be interesting to try to understand more uh, what you can find in this uh, signature database. We just look at the Lua scribes script that we um, grab and just uh, decompile. But maybe there are all other things, not especially related to ISR, but maybe related to other um, uh, malware signatures, for instance, or configuration and so on. Okay. Uh, so for now, we only scratch the surface, and we, we want to, to understand uh, how the signature format is made. So the call trust, uh, when uh, the signature are placed, passed, uh, is this one. And the idea is that uh, it will uh, decompress uh, the VDM file and then dispatch for each uh, signature uh, to the, um, the callbacks which uh, are made to handle them. So uh, the basic format is like that. Uh, you have a signature type on one byte, and then the size, and then the data of the signature. So basically, uh, here we have the uh, 5C uh, signature type, then its size, then its relative data. To understand what is uh, uh, what the type is corresponding to 5C, we have a get seek type function uh, in DPDB which uh, declare what are the actually name, the debug name for this uh, signature. So for instance, the 5 c is signature type thread begin. And it would be useful uh, to understand, to understand uh, what the, the signature is about. The signatures are uh, distributed in modules, uh, which each register some callbacks. So for instance, uh, some of the modules are the UFS, are uh, in the UFS category. Um, which uh, register a ismine function like uh, the PDF one. This ismine function will uh, try to seek for a PDF header, and then uh, if, if, if it finds it, uh, both things. And the one we uh, are interested by is uh, the reg control uh, type, which will uh, register a signature type, uh, the byte we just talked about, and sometimes callbacks. And these callbacks will be um, will be called uh, when uh, the VDM files are passed. Uh, for instance, the uh, signature type and script uh, will re register a function name pushSP to uh, uh, pass the, uh, its uh, corresponding entry. So we have to, so here is a list of um, all the models that you can find in Defender. A lot of rocks, lot, uh, of course, I didn't uh, have a look at all of them. And um, uh, uh, just for some, give you some statistics, here is the repartition of type in the anti spiral database. So the thing is that for each signature format, we have to reverse uh, the parsing function and to understand uh, what it is looking for and what are, uh, what are the data in it. Uh, this is an ongoing work and only made it for a few of them, but We'll talk uh, uh, a bit about a bit later. Um, well, it's still an ongoing work. So, from what I understand, uh, each uh, in a VDM file, uh, you have a lot of uh, threads, which are designed by signature type threads. And inside the thread, you have a different uh, signature type that can be that can belong to a specific version. Uh, which are designed by a signature type uh, fasten check. The signature has the, uh, the same for all uh, different versions. And um, there are actually specific threads. So for instance, uh, uh, you have one uh, friendly files uh, thread, uh, which is made of a lot of hash, uh, which are used to whitelist files. So here is an example. Another thread, which is uh, uh, actually very important, is the infrastructure shared threads, 
because from what I understand, it contains a lot of commands, uh, like uh, the Lua script we saw before in ISR. Uh, it also contains uh, the detection logic uh, in the form of signature tree. It also contains everything used in the sandbox for emulation and the root start store, which is used, for instance, for certificate checking. You also have also a specific uh, threat like uh, PDF, uh, scanner stream, uh, fpcss.pdb, must emulate test, and things like that. So if we get back to what we saw before, the Lua uh, signatures, we, which was the one used by ISR, if we uh, dig in a bit more, we think we saw that they're actually belonging to categories like infrastructure, uh, signature validator. Uh, so uh, here is an example of a signature validator and as an example of a post remediation, uh, which is checking some uh, some uh, WIMI parameter. And uh, this is another one which is uh, checking things in the emulation sandbox. Another type is the dbvar, which I, which I understand is it as a configuration variables, um, and which are sometimes uh, mixed with version checks. So this version is using this configuration, and this version is, is using this config configuration. So here is an example of the MC process list, or another one is the competitive security products. You can see that there is a, a McAfee, I think it's. Um, you also find things like uh, Intel TDT uh, configuration, uh, which is an Intel configuration file, um, which is using the Intel TDT um, uh, technology. I don't have the time to introduce it here. And you can find the um, classifier uh, which are using it, uh, which are using a machine learning uh, classifier. You can you can even extract uh, the weights and reproduce some. Uh, of the random forest uh, three, but this is for uh, this is left as an exercise. Another thing is the HSTR um, signatures, which are used to uh, just look up for uh, strings in file. So, for instance, uh, you can you can look up for uh, command command lines. You can look up in uh, Office macro. You can look up in uh, Java files and so on. And this is interesting because we can use it for evasion. So, for instance, if I'm scanning the Mascan uh, client, which is um, a stateless scanner, uh, it, it, um, the MP Defender will say that, okay, this is a Linux uh, port scan uh, threat. So, I can look to the corresponding threat. I can see that it's actually looking for some of our uh, strings. And just to be sure, I'm making a file which just contains these things. And uh, but uh, actually uh, doing nothing. If I compile it and if I try to scan it, it will actually say yes. Uh, I, uh, I recognize it as a post scan. And so, so we correctly understood uh, understood what is going on. But what I what I can do now, I can easily uh, uh, remove just these uh, strings. Um, and if I do that and scan again, uh, it is no uh, longer recognized uh, as a threat, and I can use the, the file. I, I just evade the signatures. Um, the brute force uh, uh, techniques also works, of course. Uh, this method is just a bit more effective. Um, so uh, um, another thing uh, interesting is our signature updates. Um, because the VDIM file is very big, but actually you also have um, near to the base file, baseline file, you also have minor updates in a Delta form. Um, the Delta VDM uh, just contain Delta blob, which are actually uh, merged uh, in, uh, uh, during the parsing. So the, the process is quite simple. Uh, the final data to parse is actually made of uh, parts from the baseline and parts for the Delta blob. Uh, he merged them, and then he, he will parse the final data to and, uh, to uh, um, to uh, load the databases to fulfill the databases. Um, so uh, during one month, I grab all the updates I can, uh, just asking uh, for, to to a defender um, the updates, and here is the, here is the, what I got uh, the just the. the some statistics on the version, uh, which is uh, evolving uh, in the time.
I have one update uh, almost uh, every two hours, and like that. I got some oddities while updating. So, uh, sometimes um, the the update uh, just uh, the update server give me back uh, um, files that uh, that are already have uh, uh, two or three uh, hours um, before. Uh, I got one broken update, um, but um, but well, it is still working. So what we can do with this update, we can div them. And for instance, if we div uh, what are um, what the file are uh, add or removed in different files, so what file were considered as uh, friendly, but actually no. Um, you have uh, one example here: the file the Sida setup, which uh, finally um, include uh, I think a spiral or something like that, or another one on a, a given setup. Uh, we can also uh, look at uh, strategy changes. Uh, there is an example where it was uh, at first a static uh, check, then a look for uh, strings, and then finally uh, look for a path. We also can look at uh, what uh, what is actually uh, um, what uh, currently interests uh, Microsoft Defender team uh, just by looking at what are the threats being updated. So there is an example uh, in the in the recent uh, update, uh, they were adding uh, things for Mirai, for instance, for instance, and removing some of the uh, old uh, threads. Uh, we can also uh, try to find uh, CNC. So there is an example in the recent update of uh, URL which is checked inside um, an Office macro, but if we run the, the the file the actually the, the actual URL is considered okay, and the the reduction is also considered um, fine. So it's checking for the macro, but not checking for the the URL the actual URL is. We will also have unnecessary changes. So for instance, uh, some of the URL scripts uh, still have their debug name and. Uh, from what I understand, this is uh, due to the uh, compilation chain. Uh, the name is uh, moving uh, during uh, checks, and uh, you will you will finally uh, get uh, changes, but uh, related to to debug path, so delta file are distributed to the whole planet, uh, just for uh, a diff which is actually unnecessary. So just to conclude. Um, we just look at how to look at Windows Defender signatures, how ISR rules are actually implemented, or how oh, they are actually checked, uh, and a deeper look uh, on uh, the signatures and uh, what our uh, antivirus um, is actually working. I hope you will learn something, and I wish you will want to take a look at it. Uh, thank you, and uh, I think it's time for Q and A.